Hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings. Wherever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, I'm Bushka. Welcome back to channel. And today we're going to be having a look at the T-54 Lightweight. Now, this is an interesting tank for me. I recently did a... Oh, recently. God knows how long ago it was now. But I did a top 10 tanks of all time for me. Favorite tanks. This is one of the last ones that got culled. Uh, it's a tank that I kind of overlooked because... As more and more new tanks come out, I've got to drive them, I've got to do videos on them, and it's almost like you rarely get the chance to just slide back into Blitz as it used to be played when I first started, before I had a YouTube channel, before I really did anything with it, which was played as just predominantly rolling about the place and having a good giggle with my mates. And this is a tank that I remember distinctly. I was in the States with my wife, and we are in San Diego. She was over there for work, and I just kind of smooched along on the trip and uh, had a lot of fun. And the Russian light tanks came out. They were, everyone was cock-a-hoop. And the LTTB was especially powerful. Uh, but this thing, almost overnight, the T-44 went from being a reasonably good tier 8 medium to completely power creeped and out, out of its mind. Because this tank, for all that it is not super tough, it is tough enough that it can bounce a lot of shots. Oh, hello, Desync. How are you going? Um, and you're going to see I bounce an absolute buttload of shots in this game. Uh, the 54 made the 44 so problematic uh, because it's faster than the 44. It's got the same armament as the 44, basically. Uh, it's got a turret that I think is better than the T-44s and by a fair margin. And it's lower gla upper glacis, while it's not spectacularly different to the T-44s. Uh, it's enough that on a light tank, it makes it a really beautiful option. And the mobility on this tank is just lights out better than the mobility on the T-44 medium. It is so freaking quick, and it is so amazing if you can face hug heavy tanks. They expect a pen, and you can just be a little bit titchy and, and move around a bit and get lots and lots of bounces. So I'm going to show you a couple of games here with this uh, this tank. One from me and one from another amigo, uh, friend of the channel, that uh, was nice enough to nice enough to send uh, a video in. That's Legacy from Pinsa, uh, and I'm going to talk you through the games and, and basically outline why it's such a special tank. Even when I potato out and look at that, I'm, I'm at 2, 2,225, 2,625 damage blocked, and that's as a light tank. And a light tank camo is pretty spectacular, and it's why I'm feeling pretty comfortable over here moving about. The wonderful blend of mobility and camouflage and armor on this tank mean that you can get an awful lot out of a pretty low DPM weapon, i.e. the uh, 100 millimeter that it's rocking and rolling, that all these kind of Russians and Chinese mediums run at this tier, like the Type 59, uh, the, you know, the, the T-44, 44100, 54 Lightweight, the T-54, like they're all the, the Mod 1, they're, they're all running the same tank. It's like a, in, in terms of a gun. And I, I'm trying to get away from this 28 prototype because I don't have enough for a single shot from either of these big boppers, the uh, VK or the T-28 Defender, not the Proto, sorry. Uh, and it's an autoloader, so it's a worry. And you can see right there, I'm in trouble because this shot needs to go in. This really needs to go in. And that's just a buttocks load of armor. We sneak under the gun of the SP-1C, just miss that, and we're off into the wild blue yonder. This is a really tough time for me as a last man standing team member. Uh, I've got to go through all three of these guys to get the Kolobinov, which is a pretty tough gig when one of them, the VK-100-01P, it doesn't matter what angle I shoot him from, uh, the RNG on pretty much any of his weak points is going to be enough to give me nightmares. Like, uh, So I go really deep. I'm happy if the SP-1C pushes me, and uh, I'm, I'm worried about that. Uh, but someone is in the cap, and I'm assuming that's going to be the SP-1C because he is quick enough. And they actually do a very good job here of pressuring me by, by just capping. And uh, that's the SP-1C doing that. He's going to cap B, and then he's going to roll on out there um, towards C as well. And here we go. This is what I'm talking about. APCR, just that little bit of extra time, we get another bounce, man. That's like 3.1k bounce. Ooh, it's so tough. That that tank's so tough. They're in town. I don't have any choice because this SP1C's done the right thing. He's low hit points. He's going to roll on down. 
Uh, I've waited and reset camo there a little bit at least, which gives me the opportunity to get past. And rather than pushing it here, I'm going to go and move to my left uh, and keep buildings between me and that T28 uh, defender. I'm very, very worried about him, but I've reset camo so I can get past here, hopefully fast enough that he misses his shot. Exactly what we were hoping. And now I'm looking for the SP1. So I'm trying to keep the brick wall still up because that'll stop heat, which he probably needs to use to pen me at that range. Oh, that is a clutch, clutch bounce. That was my ass that did that. That's three and a half K, right? But look, now I've got nothing but AP left. And this is going to kill me uh, because I've got... I, You know what really killed me? Was running into that wall there. Bad driving. Everything was good right up until then. If I get past that wall, this is a win. But as it is... One of the things this gun does not have is gun depression, and I can't get the gun down when the reload's in to actually hit that 28 defender, and we just miss it. Good pressure there from the SP1C. Really good work, uh, even though he probably doesn't get the credit. 3,700 damage and 3,500 bounced. Like, that's a lot bounced by a light tank, and it's one of the reasons why this tank is so spectacular. Now, you can see our mate Legacy from Penta here. He's pushed right up into the middle of the map, and he's playing a very traditional light tank role, but his team is all spread out in the eastern flank. They've got a horrible order of battle out there. There's a TD at the back. There's a couple of mediums moving up into the middle of the gun range, and they're basically surrounded uh, to the north and to the west by tanks that just have free reign on them. Uh, the Stubborn Emil's the tank that's all the way at the back, and he's going to inexplicably move up towards the middle of the map uh, because he can't get shots. He's, he completely loses his patience here, and it just uh, it's not a good thing. At the same time, he can't really push around the flank because his team's been just way too aggressive on that eastern flank, and there's a KV-5 that's not doing anything bit sitting at the back and a t43 that is spotted but at the moment it's hard to tell whether he is in fact afk in spawn or if he is actually just loitering so i guess he's going to do what he can do and start poking these tiger ones and super pershings at pushing across the middle of the cap circle while his is5 is hopefully going to stay up next to that building and not bleed too much uh, and Legacy's going to make a, a bit of an error here. He's going to move around to get a shot on that KV-5. And when he does, the Tiger one was just watching him and third-party peeking, waiting for an opportunity to motor across the top of that ridgeline and return serve. That's exactly what's happened. Now, here comes one of two really important pivotal points in the map. Legacy can either go down with the ship and push across here and support this stubborn Emil that is now just unequivocally in a horrific position. That is the front line for a tier 7 TD that relies on gun depression. If he had got that one to get a high roll, a 350, 340 would have been nice, but you can't have everything in this world. And now he's going to get hook, line, and sink it if he stays here. This, this Lorraine 40T needs to be motoring. He's not a frontline tank. And the only really good, solid chance they got here is to get behind the IS-5 and the Lerva and work as extra guns for those two big heavies. And that's exactly what Legacy's planning to do. He pushes across to help the Lerva out, only the T-43 is actually a spectacular AFK in spawn. He is not, unfortunately, an active member of the team. Well, fortunately, I guess, the, the game could have been a lot shorter if uh, he hadn't have been. So he's hoping to push through here, and this is an aggressive move to capture the back shot on the WZ-111, which is a very fast uh, Chinese TD at Tier 7. It's just going to miss that, and the Tiger 1 stays hull down enough to get the bounce, and then a lovely snapshot. Now, there's a, an important passage to play. This is another pivotal point. The WZ and the T49 over there have opportunities to push up and simply overwhelm these last two members of the bad guys, or the good guys, from the perspective we're watching. That T49 particularly, he's got more than enough hit points to pump on through, but they don't. They, they, they hang back, and they allow these two guys to take smaller toned engagements where they get a couple of people pushing up on them and it gives Legacy and his uh, last remaining teammate in the Lerva a good, good look at a win or at least balancing of the scales. Now he's going to cop a HE shell here from the T49 but he's managed to put two shots in to those guys over there. The Lerva puts another into the T49 and a third. So that's four shots into those guys while they were at the back of the map and it's made them one shots and if we look down here you'll see that a lot of the red team is now a one-shot. And that is playing directly into the hands of our two amigos here. The Lerva, uh, who's actually had a pretty good game, and Legacy as Commander Salamander. Now, there's that KV-5 who was hanging out at the back. The Lerva's got more than enough pen to deal with him and does so. And it's now 
two on four. And the red team is finally starting to realize that they cannot keep coming in dribs and drabs, and they might have to actually push up here together. Only the T49 had discovered his big boy pants way too late. And the only tank left with a full hit point now is this Tiger P. Now, the Tiger P is a fearsome vehicle, can do all kinds of nasty things, but Legacy has a couple of things going for him here, despite the fact that he's low hit points. One is 212 hit points is just a slightly sub-alpha roll for the Tiger P. So there is a good chance that he can actually get the Tiger P to hit him, absorb the shell, and still walk away a winner. And that's exactly what happens. 202 Alpha is not a rare roll for a Tiger P. And Legacy pumps the freaking gas, gets behind him, and gets another shot in on the Tiger P, who is still trying to get the gun down to Traverse, runs into the upper glacis, and a brilliant last stand from Commander Salander. And Legacy, and he's uh, a little bit naughty there, saying, Choke, you grub. 4,000 damage, a whole lot bounced, and... An all-round, really well-driven game in a tank that I absolutely adore, the T-54 Lightweight. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you're enjoying the channel. Hope you're enjoying the content. Look after yourselves. And as always, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.